How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Brian Schrader. Um, earlier today, I posted some uh, pictures of some mallards that I made, and uh, there was some interest in wanting them, wanting a video on how I do, um, how I flock, and how I um, basically make my decoys. Um, so, I guess I'm probably going to do this in probably a two-parter within a couple days of each other. Um, the main reason for that is uh, dry time on the 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 paint um i let my decoys when i when i flock them sit overnight um and uh they will uh, uh that 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 way we can they can get uh firmed up the flocking can stick to the uh the body of the decoy a lot better and it'll be a little more tough um a lot of these production flockings that you get um you know some of them are better than others. Um, these ones tend to stick a little bit better. Uh, you see like the uh, pictures of the Dakota decoys that, uh, you know, the flocking rubs off from the bag and stuff like that or wears out. Uh, I haven't had it, that happen yet. Um, so, but I mean, not saying it won't happen. They will, they will wear out eventually, but uh, just take care of them. They'll last, last long time. They look a lot better. Um, look a little more realistic for you guys that um, want to keep them, want to make them that way. But anyway, so I'm going to go over um, what I use, what um, the materials that you'll need to do this, um, how I do it, all that. So first off, um, the base paint that I use is Rust-Oleum oil-based. Now I use the flat colors, um, flat white, flat brown, flat black. Um, mainly and then if I need gray um, I'll mix uh, the flat white and the flat black together and get my tone of gray whatever whatever I need to do with that um, the other thing you'll need is just you'll just need a regular chip brush I usually use a one inch uh, chip brush anything more than that's kind of overkill uh, you, there's some spots that you need that you got to get in a little bit tight on other uh, thing you'll need is a flocking applicator uh, it's basically a ketchup bottle um, with the top cut off a little bit more and flocking. So I get this flocking. This is right now we're using royal blue because I'm about to make harlequins. Um, the flocking I get it. I get it off of eBay. Uh, there's a guy on there. I uh, can't remember who, what his name is, but you type in decoy flocking and it'll come up with a bunch of different colors. Um, you can pick out what you what you want and depending on what you want to make um and then you need a tub like this and that's so you can collect all the extra flocking once you knock it off the bird or off your decoy and start to uh, start with so basically and then you're going to want like red like i said before i'm making harlequins so the decoys that um i like to use are widgeon decoys um, you can use them, you can use uh, other decoys, like I recently just made some out of uh, uh, Tangle Free Teal decoys and they turned out really well. Um, so basically I'm going to turn this, this is a uh, GHG Pro Grade Widgeon, I'm gonna, I got a six pack of them, I'm going to turn these into these. So I know not everybody's from the west coast, but these are Harlequin. Uh, so the, the Tangle Free decoy, uh, teal decoys, are about the exact size of a Harlequin. So if you're looking for realism, that's, uh, that's the exact size of one. Um, these are a little bit bigger because sea ducks, you can, uh, you, can go, you can make them bigger or smaller. It doesn't really matter. They uh, tend to not, not care, and they, they stick out better when they're bigger, but that's what I had. So... Um, and then this is a hen harlequin, uh, also made out of a tangle free teal decoy. So, without further ado, I will show you what I'm, what I, how you do this. So for the first first one, I'll probably just do it like I said before. I'll do a two parter, three parter. And again, this is from the hip, so bear with me, guys. If I'm not a YouTube professional or a video professional, so you want to make sure that you're paint's mixed up real good
then you just take your paintbrush, dip it in, and paint your decoys. So since with this Harlequin, all I do is I take a big, uh, I just make the whole thing blue and then airbrush it from there. There's uh, other ways to do it too. Like you could uh, separate the white from the blue and um, then shade it in. That's what, it, that's what you, I do with the mallards and uh, birds with multiple base colors. Um, I just found it easier to do that instead of, uh, you know, airbrushing for hours on end. But basically what you're looking for when you get, uh, put as much paint on the decoy as you can without having it run on you. So, uh, you know, there's, there's a happy medium between too light and not enough. Um, try and get it as close to running as you can because basically the more paint you have on the more flocking will stick to it and because um, there's only a certain amount of flocking that's going to stick to the paint so and once that once it's stuck to the paint it's there you can I mean until it if it dry until it dries um, you can still rub it off like if you get some on the bill uh, or on the eyes, you can still rub that off. Um, I try not to get any on the bill anyway, just because these widgeon decoys have the exact bill that you want for um, Harlequin. Same color, same everything. Anyway, bear with me. This is like a kind of a little tedious process, but. And you can use different base coats depending on what color tone you're going for um, and the flocking you use. Like if you use, uh, if you have white flocking and not gray and you want to make mallards, you can use a black base coat with white flocking and it'll come out gray. That type of thing. Or if you want something a little darker than the color flocking you got use black or darker brown or whatever whatever maybe you just kind of got to play with it but with the harlequins i use a uh i use black and then i mix some black in with my flocking that I, that royal blue flocking that i get be bashful on the paint make sure you get all the cracks and crevices and don't miss any spots and just makes it for a better product you can um, when I'm I also I'll do two coats of this so I'll come back over it after the flockings dry and do another coat of paint and then uh, add more flocking that just, again, just makes it tougher. So, uh, you know, the, the, the rub spots like the tip of the tail or the heads or whatever, the sides won't get worn out as easy. You won't have a bald patch on your decoy you just spent a bunch of time on. Um, flocking's relatively cheap. Um, you can get a whole pound of it for about 16 to 20 bucks, depending on where you get it. And then uh, the, the thing it is, is it just takes a lot of time, especially the airbrush portion, which I'll show you tomorrow once I get these all flocked up. So take your time around the eyes and the beak.
when you're uh, doing used decoys, there's more prep work in when before instead of using new ones. Like this is brand new, so I didn't um, have I didn't sand it or uh, have to wash it or anything like that, uh, which is kind of nice. Saves you a little bit of time if you use new ones. But anyway, so that is the painted part of, portion of it. So after that, you take your bottle applicator that's already full of flocking and your tub. You hold the decoy over the top of the tub. I try and get it as low into the tub as you can. I don't know if you guys can see this very well. But, um, and then hold the applicator about a foot to 18 inches away from it and just squeeze and sprinkle on it. Um, the reason for holding it away from the the decoy as best you can is the fibers from the, the flocking will stick straight up into it so it'll it won't look matted down it'll look um, like it's supposed to I guess, best I can explain it and again you could just just put as much flocking as you can over it um, it's only going to take a certain amount of flocking and then the rest will slough off once you pat it off. When I'm doing the tail, I tend to point the decoy away uh, head down just so I can get underneath the, the tail feathers and back a little bit better. It just depends on which decoy you're using. But then you know, once you got everything kind of covered up, just take it, turn it upside down like this, smack the bottom of it. That knocks all the uh, excess flocking off of it. And then look, just spin it around, look at it, look for uh, wet spots or light spots in your flocking. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's just where paint's bleeding through the flocking that's already there, which means you can put more flocking on it. And there you have it. There's your base coat, Widgeon, or well, Harlequin was a Widgeon. So from this point, this is where I'll um, let it dry. I'll add an extra coat of paint or uh, paint and flocking to it, and then I'll airbrush it. So that's the basis. You can use the same technique for every duck or every time, every one you want to flock. Hold on, just a second. Um. So what I do, like. Uh, for instance, here's a, uh, a blue bill that I made. Each color, I'll do one color and then let it sit for a day. Do another color, let it sit for a day. Um, and that way, it just, it, it's, it's a process. It's not, you're not gonna rush, be able to rush this. Um, there, you know, there's things you can do that'll speed the process up, but I do it this way just because when, um, if you're like, let's say you're doing the head, and then you want to do the chest or the back. If your brush touches that part of the wet paint, that flocking that you got already put on there is going to bunch up and there's going to be a little like wrinkle and it's just going to look, look bad. But anyway, so um, this is, a, like I was saying, this is a blue bill that I did um, earlier in the year. It was one of my first ones that I was doing. Um, here's a Barrels Golden Eye. That I did. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but a little bit of purple, and then I mixed mixed black up in in, in there too. Um, Brant, here's a Brant decoy. I just took a old goose decoy out of a garden and turned it into a Brant. <laughs> but uh, I actually know one of my friends gave me those. Anyway, so um, and then you guys probably already saw the mallards I did yesterday. Um, I'll get into how to detail those out and make them like really come to life um, probably in my next video or the one after that just depends uh, 
so I don't want to make an hour long uh, part to it um, of you guys just watching me airbrush a piece. So I'll probably with the Harlequin do the white as one part uh, when I paint the white on the decoy. And then um, I'll probably maybe white and then the, the uh, rust color. And then when I do the uh, detailing in the black, I'll make that a part as well. Just so you guys won't, you know, be able to see how I'm doing it a little bit better um, than me. You having to wait like an hour <laughs> of me just airbrushing and rambling. So anyway, um, I hope this helps somebody. Uh, like I just, you know, people are asking me how they do it, and I figured it was easier to show you than to try and explain it uh, via Facebook. So anyway, here's my video. Um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment. Uh, PM me, whatever. Um, I'm not trying to hold any secrets. Um, if you want flocking done, let me know. Um, I do. It just depends on what you want. Uh, want flocked. Uh, widgeon and pintails, those, those cost more money because uh, they take a ton of time. But uh, if you guys want something done, just let me know. Want something flocked, brought back to life, uh, just hit me up. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't do this for a living. It's just a hobby. So I, it takes a little bit of time. But anyway, you guys have a good day. Talk to you later.